guys, it's Melissa from Nature's Garden. Today we're going to make a palm pillar candle. Let's whip it up! Okay, so today we're going to be working with our palm wax. First things first, I want to mention that the palm wax that Nature's Garden carries is cruelty free and it comes from sustainable sources. So that's very, very important to mention. The next thing we're going to talk about is our palm wax has a crystal effect. So what it does is when you make the candle, it has the color of the candle, but then it's kind of frosted with white. You'll see uh, when we finish exactly what it's going to look like. It's a beautiful, beautiful wax. It's my favorite wax for pillars. So recently we had a customer ask if they could use hot glue to plug the hole of the pillar mold. So if you look at the pillar mold, you'll see that it has a small hole in the bottom that you thread the wick through or put your wick pin through. And it's really important that when you're creating your pillar, that that hole is plugged. So we do carry the rubber plugs that you can use to, you thread the wick through and then you push your, your plug in there so that it will seal that hole. But someone had asked if they could use hot glue. Now in my head, of course, I'm thinking, that's not gonna hold up to the heat. But on the other hand, I do use hot glue to adhere all my wicks to my jars and that holds up. So the question is, does it work? We are going to find out. So first things first, I'm going to weigh out my wax and I'm going to melt it in a double boiler. I am going to use 40 ounces of wax. And now we're just going to take it to the double boiler and get it melted. Okay, so while we're waiting for our wax to melt, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what I did to this mold to prepare it. All I did was threaded a pre-tabbed wick. This is a CD wick. And I thread that through the hole. And there's the little metal tab. You'll hear it click in there. I pressed it into the mold and then I simply added hot glue to the bottom to seal that hole really well. And we are going to see what happens. So first things first, I want to make sure that my mat, my area is covered so that if, in case anything does leak out, it doesn't get all over the place. We are going to, we have 40 ounces of wax weighed out. We're adding four ounces of fragrance. With the palm wax, you do melt it to 210 degrees Fahrenheit, and you wanna pour at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so you'll need to work really quickly. We're going to make our candles pink. We'll use a toothpick to add a little bit of color, and we are using the red spectrum candle dye to achieve that color. Okay, and as I said, we're going with a pink color, so we're going to dip our toothpick into our red candle dye and we're just going to stir it around in our wax and at the same time we're going to add our fragrance oil as i said we're adding four ounces of fragrance oil and then we're just going to stir And finally, we're just going to pour right into our pillar molds here. I do have two of them prepared. And now we're just going to get our wick centered and we'll let these set up and we're going to let them set up overnight. We'll come back tomorrow and take a look and see if it worked. All right, so now our palm pillar candles are set up. So I went ahead and removed the larger one. As you can see, it has a really beautiful finish, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what you'll need to do to complete the candle. When you put your candle into a mold, if you look, the mold is concave, so it will swoop down a little bit and create a really nice finish on the top of the candle. That being said, when you're pouring into your mold, 
the bottom of your candle is actually the top of the candle at the when you take it out of the mold so our bottom is right here at the top we're going to go ahead and trim the wick and then we'll remove this glue And then we'll just pull this tab off. And it just comes really easily out of the mold. So now let's take a look at the bottom. You'll notice that you have this uh, wick here sticking out so you can trim it a little bit closer to the candle itself we did not have to do a second pour um what re what really comes into play is this environment when we're recording we have a lot of lights on so it's very hot in here and the candle then cools very slowly so in most cases when you're making a pillar you may have to poke relief holes so what you would do is you would fill your mold to about half an inch below the top. And while it's still warm after it's set up for a few hours, but still warm, maybe two to three hours, and it's still warm, you want to use a skewer or uh, to poke holes into the candle. And then you'll do a second pour. You want to do your second pour about five to 10 degrees above the temperature you did your first pour. This will prevent uh, less than the chance of jump lines. So, once you do that second pour, you'll just simply let it finish setting up and then you'll remove it from the mold just like I just did. And what we're going to do to the bottom of the candle so that you can't see the actual uh, wick, we're just simply going to add a warning label. And there you go. That is how you make a palm pillar candle. Now, and if you look, the finish is so beautiful. It has this nice crystal finish. This is why I love this wax for pillars. We did use our carnation fragrance oil to scent them. And now we also have another question that is pretty common. So I figured while we were using the pillar wax, let's go ahead and answer that question too. So I'm going to set these over here. We're often asked with our pillar waxes if you can use them in a container candle. The answer is technically yes, they can be used in a pillar candle or in a container. However, what it's going to do, pillar waxes are made to uh, release from your molds. They, they, they'll shrink a little bit. So you're not gonna have the glass adhesion that you would have with a container candle. Container waxes tend to be softer and adhere really nicely to your glass. If you're working with a pillar wax, that's not going to be the case. It is going to pull away from the edges. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. I have the palm, palm pillar wax, I'm sorry, and I have melted it to 210 degrees. Let me get that. Okay, so now we've melted our wax to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to go ahead and add some of the red spectrum candle dye. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stir our color in. And now we're going to add our fragrance. And once again, we're going to let our temperature drop to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we will pour it into our containers. All right, now we're just going to let them set up. 
Okay, so now the containers have set up. So there's a few things that we want to look at with these candles. So while it looks very pretty initially, um, the palm wax is very pretty. So can it be used for a container? Technically, yes. But what happens is you can really notice it around the bottom of the jars right now. It's pulled away from the jar. So over time, it'll continue to pull away. And when you move the candle, you'll be able to hear it rattling around. So if I was making them just for myself, this is something that I would do. But if I was making them to sell to customers, I would definitely stick with container waxes for container handles. So there you have it. There are our palm wax pillars and then we also have the containers. So make sure that you check out our website at www.naturesgardencandles.com. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you like the video. And until next time, we will see you later. Bye guys.